Hey, what's going on? Thomas Keenan from the Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast coming at you guys today. A little bit of a special episode. I got together with my man, Donnie Boyvin, and we actually, um, what you're going to hear today was streamed live to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. This dude's a cool cat. Uh, I've been on his podcast a couple of times, him and his partner, Kevin Snow. Great dudes. You may, may have heard Kevin on an episode uh, either right before this one or right after. Anyway, um, Donnie's got a real cool event that he runs similar to mine, Step It Up Academy Live, and he's hosting it in Fort Worth, Texas in September. You listen to the episode, you find it. It's September of this year, 2023. And we kind of got together to do a collaboration because uh, I'm hosting my Step It Up Academy Live. The next event's going to be August 9th and 10th in Dallas. And our events are kind of similar. We, we have a, a, a passion for helping other people. We figured we'd kind of come in and collaborate and, and just chew it up and be able to pretty much share our audiences. So we live stream to his groups, live stream to my groups and trying to just get some crossover there. But A, there's some marketing lessons there that you listeners should understand because you should be collaborating with other people in your area, in your networks. You shouldn't be necessarily competing with them. So there's plenty of food, plenty of money, plenty of business to go around for all of us. And oftentimes we just need to get our damn egos out of the way. So without further ado, uh, jump into this episode, listen to me and my man Donnie chop it up a bit, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something from this and, and you can take some some stuff away. With that being said, I'd also love for you to come and attend Step It Up Academy Live. Head over to stepituplive.com and grab yourself a ticket today. August 9th and 10th here in Dallas at the Dallas Omni. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Thomas and I hanging out. Uh, we both are doing some really, really cool things. So we just want to jump in, use our powers of collaboration, and see if we can't uh, make some noise and talk about some of the cool things we're into. So Thomas, why don't you introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, what you do, all that fun shit. Yeah, for sure. Hey, man, Donnie, first off, thanks for for you know kind of putting this together. You and I hopped on a call last week, and we said, hey, we should kind of support each other a bit more than we do. We do a lot of similar things. We're both in the DFW area. So let's, let's figure it out. And you know, in true entrepreneurship as it style. should be right. Yeah. yeah. It's like I mean, it's, I, it's, so many people try and do this shit alone. You know, they're out there building their businesses when they don't realize, man, there's a bunch of other cats that are just getting after trying to create things. Why don't we yep. just bring them together and figure out what the hell happens? Yeah. And before I get into me a bit too, this is a really good lesson to learn. This is collaboration, not competition. Right. <laughs> There's enough to feed everybody. For sure. He sure. goes out of the way. Yep. Yep. So, yep. This is awesome. So. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate you coming in here. Quick backstory on me for your audience who doesn't know who I am and what's going on. 22 or 23 year veteran of the car audio industry. It's where I started. It's where I cut my teeth in business and in life and learned a lot. Um, and I had my first company that failed miserably after five years because I was just a technician. I knew a lot about the industry. I knew I knew my job really well. But I didn't know anything about owning and operating and running a successful business. And if anyone here has ever heard of the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, I'm a firm believer that in business, the fulfillment side of things, the installation side of things, whatever it is that you provide to your customer, that's 20% of your business. That leaves another 80% that you have to master and learn and get good at if you want this thing to truly succceed. And you know, the reason my first company failed miserably is because I had 100% of my effort and time invested into the 20%. Yep. So it's so clear now, you know, going 20 <laughs> something years later, looking at this, but um, then I, I thought I was doing the right thing and I struggled for a long time and it, it put me out of business. It left me in a financial hole, pretty heavy. Fortunate enough for me, I, I did it at a young age before I was married, before I had kids. Smart. Yeah. So I uh, got out of that company, went to work for someone for a handful of years, got back on my feet, learned a little bit more about life, a little bit more about business and all the things. And uh, I got tired of working for the guy as much as I loved him. And I, he's still a dear friend to this day. I look up to him. He's a mentor. But I, I got that entrepreneurial bug where I was like, ah, man, I can't work for someone much longer here. And uh, went out, started the second company. And to be honest with you, I made the same mistakes over and over and over again for the first five years of that company. <laughs> God, our stories are so similar. <laughs> the saving grace for me was that I had a business partner who was just as strong headed and as, as willing to do the work as I was. So we just went in there and we grinding, right? We just yep. grinded nonstop and made things happen. Um, about that five year mark, my wife comes to me and says, Hey, uh, I'm pregnant. And I was like, Oh, Awesome. It, it was it was a good thing. We were kind of on the path of trying and making right, a right. family. Uh, a couple of weeks go by, and it was like 
the universe said to me, hey, knock, knock, uh, this is your your notice that you, <laughs> you need to grow up, become an adult. Time uh, to start adulting. Yeah, yeah, big time. The The issue with that, I shouldn't say it was an issue, just the time frame in, in my mind. I was 35, so I was way late to the game. But that was, I'm a big firm believer in life-altering events. That was a life-altering event for me, having a child, bringing a child into the world that said to me, hey, you need to grow up and become an adult and start taking things seriously. So we have this company here that's doing pretty well, but it required me and, and the ex-business partner to be in the field 20 hours a day, mm. right? Making good money, making things happen. And that was the hard work that we had to put in for the first couple of years. And then we started building the foundation to turn it into a real company after that, which we did. We had success. We had a great company, a bunch of team members. Uh, we grew rapidly from that point. But the, the piece that enabled us to grow was the willingness to go out and ask for help from other people who'd been there and done that. Yeah. And went out, looked for coaches, looked for mentors, looked for masterminds, looked for network groups, all of those things, right? Those are all things that you and I are both heavily involved in today. Yep. That right there was the missing piece of the puzzle that allowed us to really grow and scale the company. So, um, yeah. It's crazy, man. Our, yeah. our stories are so fucking similar, similar background. You know, I did, you know, four years in Marine Corps. Then I did 20 years straight commission sales. I turned 40 though. So even five years after you jump, same situation though. I had a business partner. Great dude. We're still great friends. The dude taught me a shit ton. Yep. And, you know, I just got to the point to where I I felt like there was something more like right? there, there was a different life to be legit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I made the leap in my first year in business. I got put on a non-compete that I didn't remember signing. It wasn't my business partner that came at me. It was the corporation. We were in a franchise and they came after me. So I couldn't talk about sales, sales training, business development, anywhere in the world. And that was all I knew. Yeah. Um, so I started off my first year as a success coach. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I have no damn clue what a success coach is, right? <laughs> um, I, it's for sure a business whore that just says yes to anything. Yeah. You know, um, so it was about six months into running the company that I, while my wife was asleep upstairs, I walked out the back door of our farm and her Jeep was missing. Mm -hmm. I called the police and I'm like, you know, I think somebody stole my wife's Jeep. And they said, no, sir, it's been repossessed. And I oh, went, shit. Wow. So I had to go in, tell the wife literally that not only had her Jeep been repossessed, but the mortgage was three months behind. Mm -hmm. You know, i pissed through all my money trying to make this business work. Yeah. So I'd already cashed in my 401k trying to throw money at this thing. She had to go cash in her 401k. Yeah. And, you know, so that was our light last lifeline. We had nothing else. And she said, get off your ass and go sell something. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I found podcasting and podcasting saved my ass. You know, it did a couple of things. One, it gave me a network that I was didn't know that I was looking for and needed. Yeah. But two, it taught me uh, freaking processes and systems because I was getting the luxury of interviewing, you know, some of the coolest cats in the world. And, you know, to do that, you can't have a shit show behind the yeah. process. Right. So I had to figure out the operations. I had to figure out scheduling. I had to have learn how to hire people, fire people, which I got really good at firing for a little while because I was really shitty at hiring. <laughs> Same here. Um, you know, and the, the, the podcast ended up taking off. We built a podcast consulting agency that did really well. Then when the non-compete came up, I was able to launch the training company. And then when the pandemic came through, we launched the peer groups and the peer groups just fucking exploded for us. So, yeah, you know, yeah. the one thing I like about you and I both is we're both kind of on this mission to help people find freedom of some damn sort. Yeah. I do it from the perspective that nobody was fucking doing it when I, for me when I was out there, right? Mm -hmm. So this was just straight, you know, just head to the grindstone, you know, not telling anybody how bad it was because, you know, if anybody knew how bad it was, nobody would do business with you, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, just grinding it out, man. Yeah, that's that's literally uh, why I started getting involved in doing it. You know, I, I wrote a book a couple of years ago. I got a copy here, of course, shameless plug. On fucking business, right? And Fuck the focus, which is so funny. Yeah. So I, I got this going here because, hey, man, I struggled so hard through the first business, through the second business. I mean, listen, if you don't struggle in business, I don't care what level you're at, you're probably not pushing hard enough. Right. But um, there, going back to what you said, back in the day, the internet wasn't what it is today. Yeah. Google wasn't what it is today. There was no such thing as chat GPT or AI to help you with certain things. Yeah. So there wasn't someone that you could just go to and say, hey, I need help with. Plus, 
let's just call it what it is. We're, we're two probably males more on the alpha scale of things. And going <laughs> and asking for help from others really isn't what we like to do. Right. But there's a little bit of an ego thing there. Um, oh, it's but, a lot of a bit of an ego thing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But once you hit the wall so hard and there's nothing left, you, you can't take any more money, any more blood from a stone kind of thing. Like you kind of got to put your ego aside and say, Hey, I need help here. Or like, I'm just not going to make it. Um, and that's kind of the point that I think both you and I had to get to. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so grateful that I did because it had now allowed me to go out and find some people who really did help me. And they inspired me to go do the things like write the book, right? They, they yeah. connected me with the people in the right networks who were doing things like this. Because if you asked me 20 years ago, 25 years ago, as, as a kid coming up from Long Island, New York, who was in the car audio business, if I would ever write a book, I would have looked at you sideways like, you crazy? Right. I'm a kid who barely made it out of high school. I <laughs> right. barely made it through English class. You know, so um, it's all a perspective sw uh, switch to me. And by me putting a couple of hours, months, weeks, whatever you want to call it, into this thing over here called the book, and I'm able to publish something that's able to, if I could help one person get through some of the crap that I had to deal with easier and better, maybe compress time for them, then it was a complete success. 100%. You know, that hard headedness comes up in so many ways. I mean, I, I know for a fact I had to fail so bad that I had no choice but to fight. Mm. And so, you know, the, the, for me, I tried everything else. You know, I tried going to the seminars and getting the coaches and the mentors, but I was always working for somebody else. So it was all like a half ass maneuver for me. Right. I needed to have somebody basically grab me by the damn ears and say, you know, dude, you're fucking it all up. Mm -hmm. it's time to shift. It's time to move. And that's when not only did I start fighting for myself, but I started fighting for my wife. Cause I damn sure wasn't being a husband. I was supposed to be, you know, through the process with her. So this gave me the, gave me the fuel, if you will. And I would challenge that a lot of motherfuckers need to hit some sort of rock bottom. So they'll start yeah. fighting. You, do. you know, I wish it wasn't that way, but, but mm -hmm. that hard headedness and, and the ability to know what you're actually made of, you know, a lot of people don't want to go through that. Yeah. And for me, building a business has been the greatest tool on the planet to meet the dude in the mirror. Yep. Yeah. Cause yeah. You, you're legitimately going to see what you're made of. So we both got freaking some really cool conferences, summits coming up. Why don't we talk about yours, dive into it a little bit. Who's sure. it for? What's the point of it? All that stuff. So, so yep. tell them about step it up. Yeah. So we did, we did the first step it up live in November of 2022, uh, which is crazy because it, six or five months from now, we're going to come up on a year, which is mind blowing. Um, but this is something that I had in my head for a couple of years. I've been to a lot of different events, a lot of different conferences, you know, learned a lot, been to been a member of and ran a bunch of different masterminds. And, and I got a really good understanding of what I wanted, what I didn't want in my own event. And here's my, my thought process, my theory on it right now. There's a lot of events out there that are rah, rah, let's mm. pump you up. Let's fill you full of the endorphins. Let's yes, there are. Door. Oh, and by the way, before you leave, make sure you sign up and buy my shit. Yeah, my $30,000 program, right? <laughs> I, I'm not knocking the model by no stretch of the imagination, okay? But I was like, hey, this is saturated right now with a lot of that going on. What can I do different with my events? How can we make this more of a tactical event where you come in and, yeah, you're going to hear a little bit of that. It may bump you up and give you a little bit of motivation, but we're also going to get real tactical real strategic, and you're going to do some work while you're here. Yep. So by the time you leave here two days from now, you're going to have some stuff that's ready to roll and get implemented to your company when you get home. Freaking love that. Yeah. So yeah. that that was my take on it. Um, and I wanted to hit business overall. So my specialty, for those who don't know, like I just do really well in the business operations area. And I think a lot of that has to do with my 20 plus years spent as an installer uh, and, and you know, in the car audio business, we integrated aftermarket electronics into a factory electrical system. Okay, so coming over to business operations, it, it's, it's almost like a, a direct, like, oh, <laughs> you're gonna take something that is, let's take a, a software platform that's white labeled and you have to integrate this and make it work with the workflow and processes of your business. Right. It, it's almost the same damn thing, except I'm not working on the car anymore. And it's just the way that my brain works. It just, it flows over really well. So I got heavily involved in the operations of businesses, not just for myself, because you need systems and processes and, and SOPs and operation procedures in place in order to truly have a successful business that you can walk away from or get out of in case some, some shit hits the fan in your family or business and maybe you get hurt, 
right? All stuff that I've been through. I've been hurt in the business and had to walk away and crash and burn. And I've also had a family member who was hurt in the business where I actually had a business. I was able to walk away for weeks and come back to it. It was still there. Right. Um, so how do we how do we take this this knowledge that I've gained over the last decade, compress as much as possible into two days and give it to others? Oh, and by the way, we're not just going to hit operations, but I'm going to bring in people who are on my team who are experts in other areas. And they're also going to give you some information that's really pertinent to your success, too. So I'm going to bring in my CFO. I'm going to bring in my attorney. I'm going to bring in uh, some mindset and leadership dudes who helped me tremendously. Right. I'm going to bring in some of my team members who help run my organization because they actually specialize in other niche pieces of the operations than I do. So let's bring all this together. Let's spend two days. I'm not going to break the bank either. I'm not asking you for five grand or eight grand or 10 grand to come in here. I want you to show up. I want you to bring your team if you have a team and let's make you better in the next 48 hours. Freaking love it, dude. Yeah, the, the, what I love about that is how you came up with the concept of your summit. It's a hundred percent the same direction we went, you know, same thing, dude. We, I went to all the events and I got tired of getting pitched yet on stages. You knew what it was coming, when it was coming and the networking was always great, but the content that they were teaching mm -hmm. was all this, this webinar click funnel flow yeah. stuff, right? It wasn't enough tactical things in there for me. Um, so I love that, dude. And I love that you have the operational expertise because I don't think there's enough of that in the marketplace mm -hmm. because literally that's my weakest side of my business is the operational side of things. That's why I have to have operation people on my team that handle all that stuff because I know process is freaking, you can't run a business without it. You can't, damn sure can't scale a business without it. And, and I love the fact that you have that much big focus on there and then the ability to bring in the people that have worked with you and now deliver those people to fucking others. That's, that's just a beautiful touch, dude. I freaking yeah. love that. So when is your event? Uh, next one's coming up here in Dallas, August 9th and 10th. And we're going to be at the Dallas Omni, Omni. in, uh, in the city of Dallas. So yeah, we had the last one there in May. Uh, we do them a, a Around every 90 days or so, we like to do the events. It's 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 a good piece because uh, the way that we work it, yeah, I have a mastermind. Yes, we, we do offer things in the back end too. And yes, you can come work with us long-term. One of the things that we do is the event itself is open to the public. Okay, so if you want to grab a ticket and come in, cool. Awesome. We'll gladly have you. But part of the perks of coming in and being a member of my program, of my mastermind, regardless of what level you're at, we, we issue a, a general admission ticket as many times a year you want to come, you're welcome to come because yes, will the content be similar from each event? Yes, it will be, but there will always be new information that's there because the room is always different. Yep. So come on in, let's get a refresher. Uh, if you know anything about quarterly planning when it comes to you know teams or, or executive offsite kind of deals, the max capacity that the human brain can really go between those meetings before it starts to kind of fizzle out and do its own thing is about 90 days. So this is also one of the reasons that we're bringing our people, our community, back together every 90 days. So, hey, I know you were at the last one. Yes, there's gonna be some overlap here at this one, but I need you to come in or I suggest that you come in here because you're gonna get face-to-face -face with your people, networking, you start to break bread with people, you start to do life with people. Oh, and magically six, seven, eight, nine months from now, maybe you guys over there are doing something together Yep. on the JV scale, or maybe you're just helping them out in life or business outside of what we have going on here. If I can facilitate any of that, I've won. Hell yes. Hell yes. But guys, you'd be crazy not to go to this. You know, I love the energy behind it. I love that you're doing it. I love that it's in my backyard. Um, even though it's Dallas, I won't hold that against you too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So small business owners, I'm assuming. Yeah. Small business owners. We've got people who are coming in who are, are leaders in small businesses who are coming in for their leader. We have teams. So we'll have a, 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 a for instance, we had a gentleman who's uh, local to Dallas the last event, he showed up. He's the owner, him and his wife owned the company, and they brought six of their team members to come with them. Nice. Because the information that we're giving them is not necessarily just for the business owner or the entrepreneur. It's for the executive or the leadership team in the company. So super helpful for them. And we, we definitely say, hey, you're more than welcome. You want to bring a team? You want to bring your spouse? Bring them because we also understand the power of proximity, getting in the room. So you've probably been in a situation like this because I know I have, right? You come home from an event. You learn some information. And you go to your right-hand person or your wife, right? And you say, this is the coolest shit I ever learned in my entire <laughs> life. You, you explain this in the best way possible. And that person is like, 
Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. one ear out the other. Out the other. Yep. But if that person was in the room, they would have heard it from the source and they would have bought into it a lot better than necessarily hearing it from you. And add into there, you know, because the way yours is designed like ours, you're working on it. You know, you're going to go before you go to the happy hour, go to the, the after hour, everything else. You're going to sit down and work on that damn thing, whatever it was. And then it's totally rocked and fire. And by the time, you know, you're back to the office and, and fully an implement, implementation stage. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Jesus. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. So that. let's, let's give me the backstory on yours, man. Like how, where, where did this idea come from? Like, did you have any event planning experience? Prior no, uh, it? it was actually pretty funny. Um, I was doing a live and a gal watching the live said, Hey, I got a speaking engagement for you down in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I said, cool. And it was a bunch of people on the live and they were like, well, if you're gonna go down to San Antonio, why don't we just come down there and see you speak? Which I thought was cool. Well, then a bunch of people started saying it. They're like, well, if you're going to do that, why don't we, you just rent a hotel space and you can teach us stuff while we're down there. I'm like, wait, hold on. I'm not going to do this shit four hours away down in San Antonio. If we want to do something, let's do it up in Fort Worth, yeah. you know, and, and let's put something together where I've got contacts and, and the likes and somebody on the live typed in and goes, and let's call it Donnie con. I'm like, no, we're not <laughs> fucking calling it Donnie con. And there's some old schoolers. They're still hanging around. They still call it Donnie con. Um, but, uh, uh, that was how it all started. It's we, we launched the Badass Business Summit, and the whole idea was there was a lot of there was, there was the two styles of conferences, right? There was the motivational conference, mm -hmm. and then there was like that business trade show thing that goes around the U.S. and it's not a very good conference. Just, yep. I don't like bashing conferences, but that one's horrible. And so we're like, okay, how do we bring these small business owners together to work on their business? Right. How do we get them to network? How do we get them to work on their business while they're there? Because I, I always hated going to those things, taking all the notes and getting home. And you don't know what the hell your note meant, yeah. you know, or the scribbles you drew in there or some mm -hmm. acronym you wrote down. You don't remember what the acronym stand for. So we same as yours. We, we designed it to work on your business while you're there. The whole goal of this thing is to help you get to business freedom. And it's literally teaching all the things I wish somebody would have taught me as I was building a business. Mm -hmm. Now, mine's heavily sales focused because that's my background, you know, sales, business development um, and that side of thing. But the whole summit itself is to take you on your journey of your business. So your entire system gets dialed in. Mm -hmm. So we got like Jared Morgan coming in who did a half a billion dollar exit two years ago, talking about what it really takes to put the systems in place to scale, um, yeah. talking about the investments he brought in through his company. Mm -hmm. Got Michael Haynes flying in from Australia, talking about the systems and process over there. He's stoked. This is his first time to speak in the U.S., so I'm excited cool. to have that opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, masterminds that will happen two days during the summit. So one of the biggest feedback we got. So this is year four for us mm -hmm. uh, doing the Badass Business Summit. And what the biggest feedback we got is live masterminds. So we put people in a full on mastermind situation in the summit while it's happening. So you can work on your, your business right there, yeah. throw a business issue out there and dial it into it. Mm -hmm. We'll have a CEO panel that Jared Morgan will be, you know, moderating. So he's going to be talking to these CEOs that are on a big growth scale yeah. about what they're looking at towards the future and how to really mm -hmm. go for it. There's a sales panel where Mark Zolmanoff uh, is going to be speaking there. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's it's just really, really, really cool. It's it's like you. It's the summit that I wanted to attend. Yeah. So, and most of the the people they'll tell you, man, when you come to this thing, it's it it becomes almost like family because mm -hmm. in that room, there's everybody's trying to help anybody. And as one of my attendees last year just said in an earlier meeting today, he goes, man, I was struggling with so bad with LinkedIn. And I had a LinkedIn expert that was sitting right there that literally walked me through the entire process on a break and how to get everything dialed up. He goes, the whole summit is like that. Yeah. And, you know, you love hearing that shit when you put something together, you want that impact. And we do the craziest things. I've never seen it at another summit is Friday night. We have a badass karaoke party that breaks out uh, and th that came about because the the second year of the summit i had uh, my mc pablo gonzalez who's a really good dude mm -hmm. he came up to me when we were doing just drinking in a bar and he goes hey can i get a bunch of people together and just go to a karaoke bar that i found mm -hmm. and my dj goes well if donnie doesn't care i've got a whole karaoke set up upstairs i'm like yeah don't break shit go ahead yeah, go ahead. and and so now we've been known for this karaoke party that breaks out every That's year cool. and it's a blast yeah. so so yeah 
It sounds to me like um, the similarity here that I'm pulling, and, and I'm looking forward because I'm going to come attend your event too. Uh, the similarity I'm pulling here is a lot of interaction yep. from the from the attendees for, uh, and the speakers. And that's one of the things that that we, you know, at Step It Up Live, it's like, hey, we come in here and we give a quick introduction. It's funny because Mark's my MC at my right? <laughs> uh, We basically kick off as like, hey, and we tell the speakers prior too, if somebody is up there speaking on something and you need to interject, Go ahead and do so Love within it. within reason. Don't right. you know rob their time. But we also tell the attendees if someone is up in front of you and they're presenting and you have a question, it's okay to stop them and have Absolutely. a conversation there. And we want that that two way interaction because oftentimes, yeah, it may take that speaker a little bit off the path of what they're originally going to cover, but we may uncover something that is way more important for the entire room. And if we have to pivot and make that happen, we're all for it. Hundred percent. What I, what I and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're doing the same thing we're doing is your speakers stay the entire time. Oh, our speakers stay the entire time. They interact with people. They yep. air in the room as well. They get to attend the event and yep. go through the workshop stuff just as, as much as the attendees do. We also have a VIP option, right? So yep. we, we don't do karaoke. <laughs> but that's we all that. want to do after it. But uh, our VIPs, we usually do a really nice dinner. Um, this last one we, we did in May, we, we had a, 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 a big room in the back of Terry Black's barbecue that we rented and we had great food and a couple of drinks for anyone who wanted to drink and good dessert. But we have all the speakers come to the VIP dinner as well. Nice. And it's funny, man, you get the right people in the room, like the right group of people to do something and you almost don't have to communicate. Yep. And I'm really big on communication. This is some things that just naturally happen. And this happened at the very first, uh, uh step it up live when we, we had a VIP dinner. And we go into this room, we go into this restaurant and you got these big tables and this big room and there's 30, 40 people in there and whatnot. And, you know, it can get lost and people can also start to puddle up into their clicks. Yep. Right. And oftentimes what you'll see at an event like that is the speakers will go and click up and not interact with the attendees. That's not, just not how we do it. Like our people go out into the crowd of these tables and interact and you'll, you'll see people getting up and switching seats and having conversations with other people. So the, the, the speakers that come into the event, are they're not unobtainable, if that makes sense. Yeah. They're there for you. They're there to have conversations with you. They're there to speak with you. They're there to help you as much as possible. If you want to joke around and just do some bullshit stuff, they're there for that too. right They're just good, solid people who want to interact with others and give back any way they can. Absolutely. In addition to that, because we're the same mindset there, the is... I know that certain people don't always have the courage to ask the question, right? They don't don't have the courage to maybe walk up afterwards to talk to them. So by putting the speakers at the tables and telling them to go move around, interact, now there's a better chance that person who may not have the courage to say, hey, I'm into this, I need this, is sitting side by side next to one of the speakers. And yeah. hopefully they find the courage there. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, I just sure. love that interaction. Yeah. Love that interaction. Yeah, it definitely makes it different for sure. So. Well, uh, guys, if you watched the long, the, well, this long with us, man, I hope to see you guys at both summits. I think, you know, going to step it up and then coming to the Badass Business Summit's a good freaking one-two punch. Mine's in Fort Worth, so it's not far away. Mine's sitting uh, September 20th through the 23rd here in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So if you like Fort Worth better, come to Fort Worth. I, I get that, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll drive past 360 and come out to Dallas. But here's the bottom line for this, for all of this for me, man. Invest in your business. Invest in your team because if you're making yourself an island and you're not out there freaking trying to grow yourself, your company's going to get stagnant and you're going to look up five years from now and be in the same damn place. You are right now. You have to be investing in yourself, whether it's coming to Keenan and I stuff, whether it's meeting us outside of this, find some way to get around your people that are going for it, growing, investing in their So your network can continue to level up mm -hmm. like your business network shouldn't be the same five guys you were hanging out with two years ago. That thing's got to continue to rise. And sure. events like these are just a great way to do it. Yeah, man. hundred percent. Right. Just the way it is. So, well, we're going to kick it off out of here, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. And if you guys have any questions, anything pops up, please feel free to freaking reach out to any one of us. Yeah. Uh, I'm open book, man. Donnie, right. I appreciate your time here today. Absolutely, bro. This was fun. Yeah. So, as I always say, love you, man. It. See you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast. Make sure you head over to stepituppentrepreneur.com and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode of...
The Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast.